Greetings and salutations. Today we will be covering the mysterious case of Little Miss Lake Panasofsky, or Little Miss Panasofsky, is the moniker assigned to an unidentified young woman who was discovered slain on February 19, 1971, in Lake Panasofsky, Florida. Despite over 51 years having elapsed since the crime occurred, the perpetrator remains unknown along with the victim's identity. The case has attracted significant public interest over the decades, and with two forensic facial reconstructions having been carried out, one in 1971 and one in 2012, while several Jane Doe's have been identified in recent times due to the aid of DNA technology, Little Miss Panasofsky continues to fascinate true crime enthusiasts. For decades, she has been the subject of speculation, known only by her facial reconstruction along with the green clothing she was wearing when she was discovered. In 2023, as the 52nd anniversary of her death approached, her case remains compelling as ever. It must be noted that Lake Panasofsky is a small city located in central Florida, situated around the lake that bears the same name. Despite its apparent serene location, it was the site of a gruesome discovery in 1971, particularly on February 19th of that year, when two teenagers hitchhiking along Interstate 75 who were hoping to catch a ride made a most shocking discovery. As soon as they stood on Lake Panasofsky Bridge, which spanned an entire section of the lake, they noticed something rather unusual floating in the water below. Upon closer inspection, and much to their shock and horror, it was a body clad in green. A single hand was protruding from the water's surface. She was dressed entirely in green and still had a leather belt tightly wrapped around her neck. Investigators determined that she had been dumped into the water from the overpass. Despite the victim's unique clothing and obvious signs of foul play, the police were sadly unable to identify her. In the years that followed, numerous leads were pursued, but none of them would result in any form of breakthrough. As the decades passed, the case of Little Miss Panasofsky would become one of Florida's most enduring mysteries. The initial autopsy revealed key details about the victim. According to the medical examiner, the woman had been dead for three weeks to a month before being found in the lake. She was short, standing between 5 foot even and 5 foot 5. She had brown hair and brown eyes, and was estimated to be anywhere between 17 and 24 years old at the time of her death. The first medical examiner's report suggests that she may have been European, Hispanic, or of Native American descent. The victim was discovered wearing green plaid pants, a solid green half-sleeve shirt, along with a green and white floral print shawl. The belt around her neck was a men's size 36. This was determined to be the murder weapon. Its size suggests that it belonged to her killer, as it did not fit the victim. It must be noted that several of her ribs were broken shortly before or during her death, indicating that the killer may have knelt on her chest while strangling her with the belt. Little Miss Lake Panasofsky was also found with several pieces of jewelry, including a white gold lady's wristwatch from the brand Baylor and a thin gold necklace, along with a golden ring with a clear stone on the ring finger of her left hand. The presence of this ring suggests she might have been married when she was alive. Despite being a victim of a violent crime, she had notably excellent dental care, including five silver fillings along with a porcelain crown. This indicated that she had the means throughout her life to care for herself well. However, she did have an injury in her lower right leg, which led to peritosis or inflammation around the bones, which would give her a noticeable limp. Identification proved to be a rather difficult task for investigators. Dental records were initially used and seen as the best option, as her fingerprints were not able to be taken due to the high amounts of decomposition. However, this method did not provide any leads, leaving the woman to remain unidentified. There were also no recent missing persons reports which matched her description, along with no one coming forward, and eventually, six months after her discovery, little Miss Panasofsky was buried in Oak Grave Cemetery with a metal grave marker simply reading 
Jane Doe, 1971, onto her exhumation. In 1986, her remains were exhumed and would then be examined by forensic anthropologist Dr. William Maples. The examination revealed unique information about her life that set her apart from other unidentified murder victims. Dr. Maple noticed that her pelvis showed signs of protrusion pit, which were often present in individuals who had never given birth. And not present in those who had. However, there is information that points to it being statistically more likely that she had given birth at least once. Unfortunately, this cannot be determined fully from her skeletal remains alone. Another observation made by Dr. Maples was that little Miss Patovsky had undergone a specific type of ankle surgery known as the Watson Jones technique. This procedure involved drilling holes in the bone and winding tendons through them to correct ankle instability. Dr. Raples estimated that the surgery was done shortly before her death between 1967 and 1979 as there was still some amounts of swelling present in the leg which was noted during the initial autopsy. He believed that the orthopedic surgeon who performed the surgery may have remembered the patient. However, unfortunately, no one would come forward when this information was announced. She also had hair lines on her bones which were indicated of periods of stunted growth during childhood or adolescence due to malnutrition or long-lasting illnesses. Many subsequent renderings by different artists and institutions have been based on this new information. Overall, while the examination of her remains did provide some unique insights into her health, her identity remains a mystery. Then, in 2012, a stable isotope analysis was performed on Little Miss Panasovki, which proved some fascinating insights into her origins. This particular technique involves examining the stable isotopes in a person's teeth or hair in order to determine the elements and minerals which they were exposed to during their lifetime. These isotopes are derived from soil and water and are primarily recorded in a person's teeth, allowing the individual to be linked to locations after their death. The analysis of her hair revealed that she recently moved to the United States from a location where wheat was more common in the diet than corn. Researchers have theorized that she may have originated from Europe, where wheat is more prevalent, rather than the US, where corn is more commonly consumed. This may explain why identifying her proved so challenging, as she was likely not a native to the area where she was found. Further analysis of her teeth narrowed down the origin even further. High level of oxygen isotopes indicated that she grew up near the ocean, while high levels of lead suggested that she came from a mining town. The isotope analysis indicated the highest match would be within Greece, with researchers estimating that she was likely from the Athens area. However, the high lead levels matched best with the small town of Larum, a town which is just south of Athens. It is important to note that the accuracy of isotope testing is as of yet not fully known, and this type of testing is best used in conjunction with other leads. The analysis is a predication rather than a perfect match, and its accuracy largely depends on the number of regional samples used. It is also possible for man-made scenarios to result in raised isotope levels such as living in a house with high levels of lead paint. Therefore, while the isotope analysis provides potential leads, it should be approached and implemented with caution. It must be noted that it is possible that Little Miss Lake Panasovki is still foreign to the location she was found in, or that the analysis is completely wrong. This is in part due to the forensic anthropologist in 1986 having concluded that she likely was a Hispanic or a Native American woman, which is a possibility well separate from her being from Greece. Theories surrounding Little Miss Lake Panatovsky's case has perplexed investigators and the public alike. This is to the extent that a litany of theories about her identity 
and her death have been made. Some of these theories emerged from the official investigation, while others have stemmed from tips provided to the police, along with investigations done by independent parties. The 2012 isotope analysis results and her potential connection to Greece have fueled many more theories. The first theory is the theory of domestic violence, which is one of the most plausible theory. The fact that she was strangled and none of her jewelry was taken suggests that someone likely committed a crime of passion and this individual knew her well. And while the killing could have been a random act, it appears it was driven by primarily anger, which aligns with the possibility that our Jane Doe knew her assailant. The ring on her left hand supports this theory even further. There is a large probability that she was married, and her husband, if she had one, is a potential suspect. If she was an immigrant who had recently moved and married an American, her separation from her home country's community could have made her significantly more vulnerable to abuse. Based on statistical data, it is more likely that Little Miss Lake Panasovki was killed by someone she knew. Whether it was someone she lived with or not, that remains a question that must be answered. However, the likeliness of her killing being due to a serial killer is rather low. Due to this information, other theories have emerged throughout the years. In particular, in 1988 stands out. A woman identified only as Carol was reported as a potential match after a witness recognized a clay reconstruction of Jane Doe by artist Betty Pat Gleff. The witness claimed to have met Carol in 1970 as a runaway and encountered her multiple times at Clearwater Beach, just south of Lake Panasovki, until she suddenly and unexplainably disappeared. Carol divulged that she had been forced to give up her child and suffered a leg injury at the time of her disappearance. However, she did not reveal her own last name or the state that she had ran from. However, she indicated that her parents had hired a private investigator to follow her in her past. This led her to flee to Florida, presumably from out of state. This lead was investigated. However, ultimately, it was a dead end. Law enforcement would go on to check the arrest and the disappearance records for a young woman named Carol. However, nothing was found. Furthermore, all the information provided by the witness had been previously disclosed to the public leading to the validity of her claims to not be verifiable. Since then, there's been no updates on the Carol lead. However, despite the possibility that this lead could be potentially fictitious, the circumstances would match well, which means it must remain a potential avenue for further investigation. Focusing on the theory that Little Miss Panasovki may have been from Greece is important. However, the reliability of isotope testing used in the support of this theory has been questioned. However, despite this, investigators looked into the events in the area around the time of her death, and they coincidentally found a Greek Orthodox festival had occurred, and the festival's name was the Epiphany Festival in Tarpon Springs, which is in relative close proximity to Lake Panasovki. This festival was a significant enough event that people were traveling from different parts of the state and even different parts of the country in order to attend. Investigators believed that it is possible that Little Miss Lake Panasovki may have been in attendance at the festival and may have been what brought her to the United States. However, there is no way to verify this claim and no one was reported missing from the festival. Therefore, the lead went cold. While some investigators support this theory, it is improbable that our Jane Doe traveled all the way from Greece just for the singular festival. It is possible that she had come from Greece earlier for another reason, likely marrying into or immigrating into the United States, and the festival just attracted her to the area. However, the festival itself being the primary attraction 
connection and reason for her moving to the United States seems improbable. Nevertheless, the Epiphany Festival continues to be linked to Little Miss Pansoki's death and is discussed frequently enough in relation to her unidentified status. It must be noted that further investigations into the festival could potentially provide new leads into the case. Another of the more popular theories regarding the identity of Little Miss Penasovki is known as Konastina theory. The theory gained traction after a Greek missing persons TV show aired in 2012. Following the show, a woman called the TV station and claimed that Little Miss Lake Penasovki was an old friend of hers named Konastina. The caller had met or supposedly met Konastina through school in Athens, where they both studied home economics. Konastina lived in Larum because of her brother being stationed at a naval base there. The caller and Konastina were supposedly good friends until the 1970s, where they separated. The school sent its graduates on two years working contracts to either Australia or the United States. The caller went to Australia, while she claims that Konastina went to the United States, and that time was reportedly the last time she had seen her friend. Details of when and where she was in Greece and that she moved to the U.S. less than a year before the death of Little Miss Panasovki made Konastina a good potential match to the analysis made by the forensic examination. However, it has been nearly impossible to track down any information about Konastina. Attempts have been made on multiple occasions. However, all the information that is received seems to be conflicting from whether or not she returned to Greece, along with no official records confirming her existence at all. Despite the obstacles surrounding this avenue of investigation, the Konastina theory remains one of the most discussed and widely believed theories. However, it is unlikely to ever be ruled out until Little Miss Lake Panasovki is identified as another person. With the advent and advancements of DNA testing technology, and its successful use in identifying countless other John and Jane Doe's, the future of identifying Little Miss Lake Panasovki seems rather bright. The investigators in this case have shown a willingness to use cutting-edge technology in the past, so hopefully the use of ancestral DNA testing will be an option in the future. Fortunately, Little Miss Lake Panasovki already has DNA samples on file, so this process might not even require another exhumation of her body. It is possible that the genetic genealogy is already being used in order to solve this case, and it just has not been made public. Such high-profile cases allow for a lot of work to be done behind the scenes without it being known until the identification is properly made. We can only hope something similar is being done with the case right now. As technology advances, it is increasingly likely that Little Miss Lake Panasovki's identity will be revealed, potentially leading to the identity of her killer also being found. And despite 50 years having passed since the murder itself, Justice might yet be served. What information is concretely known about Little Miss Lake Panasovki is that she was a young, white, or Native American female with brown hair and brown eyes, and that she was murdered in February 1971 and was left in Lake Panasovki near Interstate 75, still wearing her gold jewelry and green clothing. Earlier in life, she suffered from ankle problems, which resulted in in a surgery, which may have left her with a limp. It is also believed that she potentially could have spent time or a significant amount of her life in Europe, specifically Greece. However, even with all this information, the identification of Little Miss Panasovki, while possible, is not assured. Hope still remains that technological advances will aid in clearing the remaining mysteries surrounding her case. If you remained with me until the end, I thank you, and I do hope you stay tuned and subscribe for more content.